It's the biggest of the pieces. And then in Gallery 3, there's uh, some really carryable little pieces. I've been painting planets in space um, alongside also abstract work, but the, the series of planetary spacescapes, I call them, is something I've been doing for over 10 years, at least. Because uh, it's just something I really love. I love the mystery of space. I like to visit the NASA website and hear about all the recent discoveries going on with probes and telescopes and whatnot. There's just always new things that we're learning. And um, it's also very romantic. You know, the imagery is very romantic and um, contemplative to me as well. And the one we have so, uh, this one is, um, uh, it's a piece I call Kustabi, which is actually after a, another painter, um, although he doesn't do anything to do with space. Um, it's just a name that I like. Um, and I, also, um, Mark Kustabi uses other people to paint for him, which I don't do, but um, it just kind of reminded me of something to do with the, a similar energy with his work. But in fact, it's just um, some sort of fictitious planets, all from similar kind of um, material in terms of geology. Uh, they're colors that I really like. I like to play with the medium and get sort of different textures and things. But in the end, it, it reminded me of billiard balls. So there's a kind of connection with Mark Kostabi and a particular pool hall I visited in New York City. And it's just kind of the, the dancing of the spheres. It's kind of connected with all that for me. Um, it is, it's one of my favorite pieces. Although it's really hard for me to pick a one favorite, but it's one of them. And here. And this too. Um, that's another one of my favorites. I'm going to end up saying that about every piece, though, if I don't watch out, because it's just kind of how I feel. But this one, it's a kind of about approaching uh, a mysterious planet. You know, uh, you're about to make the approach and perhaps orbit around this one and maybe land on the surface, or at least do a flyby and go visit some of the other planets in this particular system. Um, yeah, this is kind of has a feeling about making the voyage to possibly see what's on that planet. Incidentally, though, this the materials of this piece, uh, besides um, just acrylic, the gold bits, and you'll find that on many of the pieces, the, the shimmery gold bits are made with titanium particles. So it incorporates actual minerals that you find in the Earth here that can also appear in other planets and other systems. over here and some of the other ones you'll see in the other room um, I've begun to incorporate astronauts I feel like each and every astronaut is a self-portrait I've um, gone through some personal changes in my own life over the past couple of years and this is the first one that I did um, kind of chronicling the different changes in my life and that's why I've got a solo astronaut just kind of approaching an unknown world and just kind of looking at it like, okay, I've discovered a new thing in my life and I'm going to encounter this and so forth. And then this one, it's got, uh, you could see them as two different people or as a narrative where this one, he's approaching the planet and then he's done whatever, he or she. Sometimes I think of myself as he or she, or neither, or both. Um, but then there, this time at the end here, the person is going home. Yeah, so um, this one I call on top of the world because when, you, when it comes to a world or a planet, I mean the top, the bottom, you don't know which is which. It's any part of it could be top or bottom. So as he's, uh, we're going around in circles, he's now at the top as far as he's concerned. <laughs> what about this one? Um, now this one, um, well, I really particularly like the earth tones and stuff in here. I mean, for me, 
it's really about the warmth and um, the sort of um, potentially could uh, harbor life or it could be a desert with maybe had had some life on it at some point, kind of like Mars in a way, um, but there's two, so it's a binary system. And um, I often like to do that. I, I, I don't like to leave my plant planets by themselves too much. I like them to have uh, other objects around them that they can kind of bounce off of, in a, so to speak, you know, or relate to or orbit around. Um, but I find this one a very relaxing and calming sort of a, a feeling. You know, you might want to go visit this place and then maybe go visit the next neighbor afterwards. Uh, and here, so starting over here, this one is um, it's called Mercury Rising, and it's kind of typical of how I work. I mean, it wasn't originally uh, meant to be a painting of the planet Mercury, but it does, for me, kind of evoke a similar feeling to Mercury. Um, and what I like about that planet, it's quite interesting, is, of course, it's the closest to the sun, and it always turns the same face to the sun. So half of it's always daylight and the other half is always night. And uh, you know, there's still a lot of mystery about planets like Mercury, we don't know. But in my imagination, I like to think there's a lot of gold. Because I like to think there's, a, there's I, they know there's a lot of metal on Mercury. So in, in my mind, I like to imagine that there's a lot of molten gold on Mercury. And of course, there's the gold, uh, colored titanium on that planet. This one is a little more um, soft and gentle and sort of um, nurturing feminine colors for me. So I call it placenta because it reminds me, I could imagine a little, a little fetus inside there floating through space. Um, and on through to these, these series of three here are um, sort of probable Earths. And I did all three of these after having made a small painting, which I made for the astronaut Chris Hadfield. I gave him that painting when he came to Montreal. And I was really inspired by reading his book and talking to him. And so I decided to do a few uh, images of sort of probable Earths, like one of those planets that they've recently discovered out there that are Earth-like and that potentially we could visit at some future uh, distant date. So, and another? Here's, yeah, another little self-portrait as an astronaut. Um, this one's called I'm Not the Man They Think I Am at Home after the Elton John song, uh, Rocket Man. And it's just that kind of feeling of, you know, this is what this person does <laughs> for a living, basically. You know, who could imagine what that would be like? You know, I like to imagine it. And there's small ones here. Yeah, and um, well, some of these, I mean, the, especially these three, I mean, they just kind of started off as playful. Uh, exercises and see, you know, not a specific plan of exactly what I want it to be. Just let them, I let the materials kind of guide me, you know, as far as um, colors to use and, and that sort of thing. I was really happy with how that turned out and it seemed to kind of divide the planet into two halves, you know, and I was thinking about putting one, one person here just about to land in a totally different expedition up here, but they neither of them know that the other one is there. And it's just kind of that weird coincidence, but who knows, maybe they'll meet each other in the middle, you know. Uh, so it's called Worlds Away, or rather A World Apart. Um, and these two are part of a series where I juxtapose something really ordinary mundane, something you see every day like a street light, and uh, put it against this giant full moon, just to give it that kind of, you know, otherworldly look to something we see every day. Uh, I grew to really like the exercise of, of painting street lights, and uh, since doing these, I've, I've done a few more. Um, it's just kind of like the little light reflecting the big 
light of the moon and the, putting the two together. It's kind of hard to explain, but... And how long is the show here? Uh, the show goes until the 4th of April.